Should we do Swiss Army Man? Oh, is this, this is the rather unusual... Very movie. odd. Daniel Radcliffe movie. Yeah, Daniel Radcliffe. The film uh, directed by the Dan, by Daniels, which is Dan, Dan Kwan and Dan, uh, Daniel uh, Shinett. So um, it begins with Paul Dano? 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 I'm going to go for oh, Dano. I Dano. I, I think, think so. Dano, yeah. uh, who I think is great. And particularly, he was so fantastic in the Beach Boys film. Um, so it begins with him as a man on a desert island attempting to uh, hang himself. Oh. And yes, cheery start. And then just as he is attempting to do this, he sees a body, a bloated dead body, wash up on the shore of the desert island upon which he appears to be stranded. And uh, so he unhangs himself and he rushes over to the body, think, thinking it's a you know, friend. And uh, it turns out the body is not alive, but the body is full of gas, full of flatulence. And he then discovers that he can ride the body like a jet ski because it's full of flatulence. The body is played by Daniel Radcliffe. So he can, I mean, of course, who, of else course would, who else would you pick? And get on Daniel Radcliffe and his flatulence will drive them along <laughs> like a jet ski. This is the story, OK? And will then take them to, uh, to, towards a civilization, And then um, they end up living in the woods together. Well, living, obviously. One, only one of them is actually officially alive. And they're stuck in these woods together and they start to develop this relationship because the the Radcliffe character is apparently dead and yet slightly animated initially by the gassiness in his body but then as things go on he seems to be somewhere between alive and dead so he's officially a, a corpse but he's yeah. a kind of lively corpse and uh, anyway turns up he's very useful he's a clip got something in there you're like the multi-purpose tool guy you're special you're special yeah and that's why I need you to help me get home. Back in civilization, there's seven billion other living people on the planet just running around and blinking and breathing and eating. And you used to be one of them. You were probably just looking for happiness. That's what everyone does. This is what you look like when you're happy. You look for someone who will make you happy. A friend, a girlfriend, or a dog. Good boy. Good boy. Sometimes you might be lucky enough to bump into the one person you want to spend the rest of your life with, and that is love. So you get a sense from that of the kind of, the strange sort of melancholic, yearning, longing tone of the film that is also essentially about a guy who's alive and a guy who's not alive, living together in the woods, and Paul Dano's character then explaining what the world is actually like and how things work. And some of the humour is very uh, very flatulent and some of the humour is bawdy and some of the humour... It's all sort of profoundly surreal. And it's a, it's a strange film that has divided people. I've read a couple of one-star reviews where people are saying this is just... Which, which is patently silly, right? It's not a one-star film. I've also read a couple of people who absolutely loved it. And I think it's not great. I think what it is is a very good and interesting short film stretched out to make a less interesting and successful feature-length film. There are things in it, individual things in it, that are really arresting. I mean, both the performances are pretty good. Again, Daniel Radcliffe just doesn't seem to get things wrong at the moment. I mean, I, I know that not everybody in the press agrees with this, but I think he's very good and very adventurous and very versatile. And I have to say, he seems terribly nice as well in in uh, you know in person. Um, so it's it's like a a kind of surreal conceit that's got at its heart, this kind of strange, melancholic, whimsy um, and uh, sort of longing, which you hear there in the soundtrack and in the way in which the film is put together, which occasionally has elements of slapstick in it, occasionally has elements of sort of, uh, you know, strange grotesquerie about it. And it almost works and then it will kind of fall apart and then there will be just... I mean, Daniel Radcliffe was interviewed recently and he said people have, have fixated too much on the farting. And I understand that, but it, it's not as if the film itself doesn't fixate on the on the, on the flatulent thing. There is far more to it than that, but that is one of the things that it's, it's obviously easy for people to fixate on because the, some of the most surreal sequences do indeed involve that and the jet propulsion in all its many forms. So I think it's an interesting, genuinely quirky, genuinely offbeat. I mean, I haven't seen another film that that's quite like this, um, certainly not in sort of recent memory. But I did have the feeling that it's a short film, that it would have been a great short film. And as it is, it's a, 
and I, somebody else, I have a talking to Simon about this, the thing that it made me think, do you remember that record, Things That Make You Go, hmm? Yes, yeah, CNC Music Factory. Is, uh, fine, I didn't know that's who it was by. Mm-hmm. But that mm-hmm. record is a review of this film, Things That Make You Go, hmm. 